A red-billed oxpecker and its young hop along a somnolent African buffalo looking for ticks and larvae. The buffalo doesn't seem to mind the birds, even being tolerant of it poking around its eyelids. These birds occupy a unique part of the food chain. Their food source is ectoparasites, and fortunately for them, supply is plentiful and competition is low. Oxpeckers are in the family Bufagidae. There are two different kinds, the red-billed and the yellow-billed. The red-billed can be found in Eastern Africa, whereas the yellow-billed is found in Sub-Saharan Africa and sprinkled throughout the East and a little in the West. The most obvious difference between the two is their bill color, solid red in the red-billed and yellow in red in the yellow-billed. Both have red eyes, but the red-billed has a fleshy yellow eye waddle. And lastly, notice that the yellow-billed is a darker shade of brown and has a darker head than its red-billed cousin. Their hosts include African herbivores, such as the buffalo, zebra, impala, giraffe, hippopotamus, and rhinoceros. They'll spend all day on these giants, feasting on ticks, sleeping, and sunbathing. They steer clear of primates and carnivores. Elephants don't tolerate them, dislodging them with a flick of their trunk, tail, or ears. Their skin doesn't support many ectoparasites anyway. It lacks sebaceous glands that produce sebum, and that is one of the things that attracts the ticks. The oxpecker has strong legs, sharp claws, and stiff tail feathers, much like a woodpecker's. The three points of contact allow them to prop up their bodies as they move about their hosts in search of food. They comb through the animal's pelage in search of insects, ticks, larvae, and dead skin. For the most part, the relationship between the oxpecker and their hosts is one of mutualistic symbiosis, meaning that both benefit from the relationship. The birds reduce the tick load from the animals and get fed in return. They keep tick populations in check and can consume more than 300 ticks and 1,000 larvae each day. Fewer ticks on the animal means less blood loss, less disease introduced by the tick, and greater health and fitness overall. This is Oxpecker Cleaning Service at its finest. They also consume earwax, mucus, blood, sweat, and tears. And that gives rise to more questions and hypotheses. They aggravate existing wounds, pecking at them to drink the blood. So the relationship appears to be partly mutualistic and partly parasitic. There's a lot of speculation among researchers. Some suggest that the birds help, to a point, by removing maggots and dead tissue. Others say that the birds aggravate the wounds, preventing them from healing, further weakening the animal. There's also the idea that they don't reduce tick loads enough for it to make a difference, so the birds are actually more of a nuisance. Despite the ongoing debates, there is one indisputable way that the birds benefit the animals, and that is by providing an early warning system. Rhinos are remarkably nearsighted and colorblind and can't see a motionless person standing 30 meters away. That's roughly six car lengths. To make up for their poor eyesight, they rely mostly upon their sense of smell and hearing. The bird sounding the alarm of an approaching human or other threat communicates to the rhinos to become more alert and to face downwind where their sense of smell can detect approaching danger. In fact, the Swahili name for the oxpecker translates to the rhino's guard. So, what do we make of this peculiar bird? Is the oxpecker a hero or a villain? A trusted friend and ally? Or more of a pest that the animals begrudgingly tolerate? Certainly, they are helpful sentinels. Perhaps they're a little bit of everything, making their relationship a bit complicated. But what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.